Hello and welcome to Capital Online TV. My name is Aranit Nderu and these are the stories making headlines. Ousted Makweni Governor Kivutha Kibwana says he will continue collecting signatures to defuse the county despite the impeachment by the county assembly members. Kibwana, who is blaming the Waipa party for orchestrating his impeachment, says he will use all available avenues to clear his name following allegations facing him. However, in a statement, the Waipa party has declared that it doesn't support Kibwana's impeachment or the dissolution of the county. The resolution to send him home was passed yesterday by 35 MCAs, defeating 10 who voted in his favour after weeks of bad blood between them. Kibwana's fate now lies with the Senate, which is set to hold a special sitting to investigate allegations facing him to establish if the MCAs were justified in kicking him out. The Committee on Devolved Government, which has already called on the public to submit their views, will be initiating a three-day probe on the conflict set to begin 14th October. What is factual is 22 MCAs from Waipa Party uh, voted in favour of my impeachment. And they had been uh, talked to by their leadership. And uh, they decided not to listen to the leadership. Even in the Makwene situation of uh, Keala, they had been talked to the leadership and they decided not to listen to the, to the, to the leadership. So, uh, apart from just factually saying 22, uh, all, all of them voted for my impeachment. I cannot say that they were told to do that uh, because I know Ross Musio, I know uh, Honorable Maduki, I know you know, uh, Modama, I know people who are telling them not to do that. Uh, that is why I really laud the people of Makweni for deciding that they will take us all home. So, uh, in actual fact now, I think we have uh, more than the signatures which are needed for the petition. And in actual fact, uh, I am told that they have sent people at the IEBC uh, to check on the procedure of verifying the signatures, just like in the referendum, that is necessary. And, and, and as, 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 a, as an ordinary citizen of Makwene as well, apart from being a governor, I support that process fully. Pressure is mounting for the arrest and prosecution of two police officers accused of killing a 14-year-old girl in Kwale. The Independent Medical Legal Unit Executive Director Peter Kiyama says police have failed to arrest their colleagues, who include Kinango DCIO, despite an order by the courts. Director of Public Prosecutions Kariako Tobiko had sanctioned the prosecution, but they failed to appear in court yesterday, prompting the judge to order their arrest to be charged on Monday. The two are accused of killing the girl during a raid in their house, although Police Chief David Kimayo claimed they were acting in self-defense. We note with concern the fact that the National Police Service and the conduct of police officers in that service continue to be a great hindrance to access to justice for victims of violations of human rights, including violations by police officers. In this particular case, the Director of Public Prosecutions has issued a clear order following a, a, a professional investigation by the Independent Policing Oversight Authority. But those in charge of the National Police Service have defied the order to arrest the officers and prosecute them. That to us is a great injustice to the late Kwekwe. We are very concerned that there is a very fundamental problem within the National Police Service that is being manifested in the increasing number of people dying from police bullets in cases where police officers are not under threat, neither are civilians under threat. We call upon the Inspector General of Police, the Deputy Inspector General in charge of uh, Administration Police, the deputy in charge of Kenya Police Service to change this trend. And on the international scene, Liberia said on Friday that it is banning journalists from Ebola clinics, defying media rights campaigners who had warned panicked African countries from muzzling journalists as a response to the crisis. 
Government spokesman Isaac Jackson made the announcement as he was questioned on a radio phone in show about reporters being barred from covering a strike at the Monrovia Ebola Treatment Unit. The Deputy Information Minister told listeners to commercial station Sky FM, journalists are no longer allowed to enter ETUs. These journalists enter the ETUs and cross red lines. Adding, they violate people's privacy, taking pictures that they will sell to international institutions. We are putting an end to that, he said. Liberia is ranked 89th out of 180 countries in the 2014 Press Freedom Index produced by Reporters Without Borders. Sierra Leone is 72nd, while Guinea is ranked 102nd. And in business, the Uchumi rights issue is set to open after approval from the Capital Markets Authority. The authority said it was satisfied with the disclosures submitted by the company complied with regulatory requirements for public offers and listings. The retail chain is seeking to raise close to 1 billion shillings to finance its regional growth and expansion program as it seeks to consolidate its position in regional markets. The funds will partly finance the retail chain's seven-year growth and expansion program that will cost 2 billion shillings, with the company having already secured the remaining 1 billion shillings through asset financing and loans from commercial banks. And that's all we had for you today. For the latest on these and other stories, log on to www.capsulafirm.co.ke forward slash news. I'm Anita Enjoy your weekend.